Many Republicans opposed to Donald Trump have consistently argued that he has no chance of winning the White House. One exception is Bill Kristol, founder and editor of the Weekly Standard. He's had a different view of Trump's prospects for some time. Hello, Bill. Hi, Brett. Nice to see you. Um, been a while. It's good to see you. Yeah. What? So you've been saying for a while, you've been warning uh, your, some of your conservative colleagues that uh, Trump's chances look better than people thought. What, what, what tipped you off? What gave you your view? Well, I was so wrong in the primaries. For one thing, I'm probably reacting to that, maybe overreacting. And then the Washington Post, about what, three plus weeks ago, at Sunday Washington Post had a front page story, Clinton team confident of winning, planning legislative agenda, you know, planning the drapes in the Oval Office and all that. And I thought, you know, that's a good contrarian indicator. We're about to have a Trump rally. And he was down six or seven points at that time in the consensus polls. And he has rallied since. Uh, she's had a very rough couple of weeks. He made himself look more presidential and more acceptable. The main thing is I went through the 92 election. I was Dan Quayle's chief of staff. You remember that election? George H. W. Bush was not a bad president, actually, I think history will say. But people wanted change. They were tired of the status quo. They were unhappy. They'd been in a recession. They didn't appreciate what Bush had done. And, you know, when, when you're in a change environment, people will excuse a lot of flaws of the change candidates. Bill Clinton had some flaws. Ross Perot had lots of flaws. Together, they, they got, what, 62% of the vote. Uh, Bush went from 54 to 38 percent. That's left a mark on me, uh, losing that election so badly. Uh, and and it, but it really taught me something about interchange environment. The candidate of change has a big advantage. He has a kind of, the wind is naturally at his back. And Hillary Clinton is the status quo candidate. Her party's been in the White House eight years. She served in President Obama's administration. And most importantly, she's done nothing to advance an agenda of change. I'm really mystified by her campaign. If you ask people, and I'm really not saying this in a polemical way, just analytically, what, what changes will Hillary Clinton bring about? What's the answer? Yeah, that's a good question. It's also a good question of what her slogan, Stronger Together, actually means. I mean, Trump's slogan is, Make America Great Again. You know, you might not think he can do it. You might think it's, you know, sophomoric or whatever, but it's clear. And, that's, and, it, and it reflects the way a lot of people seem to feel. I'm, I'm a little less certain about hers. What's your take on that? Right. He's going to get tough on immigration. He's going to renegotiate the trade deals. He'll build up the military, but not get us involved in wars. Again, however coherent and, and intelligent that people could say what Trump will do, and he'll shake things up. Hillary Clinton's entire message is Donald Trump is horrible. He's terrible. I'm not pro-Trump, so I'm not unsympathetic to parts of that message. But you can't simply, I don't think, run for president by trying to disqualify your opponent. I mean, you can. And he's certainly given more grist for disqualification than a typical opponent. So maybe it'll work, but it's awfully risky. Just today, a couple of hours ago, Hillary Clinton did a video with some labor conference in Las Vegas. She said she couldn't understand why she isn't 50 points ahead. Uh, but the people she's speaking to, the union supporters of hers, they need to get the message out. And what's the message in the next sentence? If you look at just the transcript, what she said is, in effect, Donald Trump is, is, can't become president. It's just too horrible. Friends don't let friends vote for Donald Trump. She needs to have some positive message. You know, in 1988, think about the last time a party held the White House for a third straight term when George H.W. Bush won as Ronald Reagan's vice president. He ran as a loyal supporter of Ronald Reagan, but he also had an agenda of, I'm going to change a few things. I'm going to focus more on education. Education. I'm going to focus more on the environment. I'll be kinder and gentler. I was a Reaganite, so I was actually a little unhappy with some of that. But it was, in retrospect, it was extremely smart politically and the right thing to do. You just can't be, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here. I'm from the party that's held the White House the last eight years. People think the country's on the wrong track by two to one. But my opponent is just so horrible that you can't elect him. Bill, thank you. Always, always eager to hear what you have to say. Thanks again. <laughs> Thanks, Brett.